Jessica, maybe you were close by this much. What's up guys and welcome to my review of Trigger Warning, the new Netflix film that was just released. It's something that I caught wind of on social media about a month back. It was something that I was really intrigued by, most notably because of Jessica Alba, who's been my major Hollywood crush since my teen years, still is. Granted, she's not a major league actress, but the films that I've seen her in, hearts and eyes. So the film essentially follows Parker, an active duty special forces officer who is called back to her hometown after learning that her father suddenly died in which she finds herself in the middle of conspiracy theories, gangs, and corruption. I was very curious to see a full-fledged action role from Jessica Alba. I mean, up to this point, you mostly ever got from her as these sexy, bombshell, damsel in distress type roles, such as like in Sin City, Machete, and Honey. So it was nice knowing that the day finally came that her big break for this type of role was finally coming, was finally within her grasp. That she was finally able to play this straight up badassery, kick-assery character. But did this really live up to that potential? Was this really the right film for that? Starting off with the positives of Trigger Warning, I gotta say, Alba, she definitely had it in her. It definitely showed that she had this badassery character in her that had been bottled up all this time. She definitely hit her mark as an action potential. She did a great job as this badass soldier who with a little bit of PTSD but not too much. It doesn't showcase that she has too much but you can tell that things are going on up there. As she goes back to her hometown, tries to get to the bottom of things and after she learns that her father dies she starts noticing these clues that maybe he didn't die, he was killed and people are just trying to cover it up, as the trailer clearly shows, and you just get to find out what actually happened. And I'm not saying this because she's my crush, I'm not trying to be biased here, but I honestly do think that she gave it her all in this film. I think she always had it in her. It showed glimpses of that, especially with Sin City of Dame to Kill for. She just had that badassery, tough character inside of her that was just yearning to get out. And to where she was actually just a straight up main kick assery character that I think Alba really should have gotten way earlier on than now. But I genuinely enjoyed what she brought to the table in terms of badassery and kick assery. I think she definitely has what it takes. And I hope I see more of that, no matter what it is. I think it's about time that she finally got recognized for a part like this instead of just playing the bombshell, not that I'm complaining, bombshell. Damsel in Distress character that eventually turns into a badass Nathan City of Dame to Kill for, but I think she deserves a part like this where she's that through and through, not just focusing on the sex appeal. And you get a pretty basic story, and I'm sorry if I repeat myself here. You get this soldier who is told that her father had died in a mine in her hometown. So she goes back to her hometown where it happened, and she just starts investigating, and she starts you know, noticing clues that maybe it wasn't an accident, maybe he was killed. So that just takes her on down on a long path of just corruption and gangs and bad stuff that's just been happening in her own hometown that unfortunately started with her father's death and it just opened up a whole can of worms. And she just gets tangled in a web of lies, deceit, and corruption. That may sound like that's been done to death, it may sound a little bit too generic, but I actually enjoy a good mystery thriller. But it was pretty enjoyable. I, I I actually did like that portion. I actually did like the story. Moving on to my mixed, and this is where most of my thoughts lie, but the action, I'm a little bit conflicted. This is where most of my conflictionness comes in, or conflicted areas come in. On the one hand, when the action sequences was actually going on, it was actually pretty enjoyable. It was actually pretty entertaining. As I said, on Jessica Alba's part, she was a tough ass. She was badass. She was good at kicking ass and taking names. And she was pretty good with a knife. The whole time I was watching this, I was thinking to myself, man, maybe her and Lee Christmas from Expendables should get together because they were both good with a knife. Her and Jason Statham's character. Just saying. <laughs> but anyway, moving on. Solid explosive scenes. And shoot 'em ups. You get all that. But on the other hand, what kind of pulls it back for me is it does feel a little dry. 
it felt like there was some pretty long breaks in between. It, it just it, it's classified as an action movie, but there was some pretty long winded scenes in between. Now, don't get me wrong, the story was interesting enough, but to me, I kind of wanted more. I wanted more action to it, and to this, it just kind of felt plain. Now, I understand that there's different styles to each movie. Not everything to be John Wick or Rambo. Yes, I get it. But with Trigger Warning, especially a name like that, it could have benefited for, uh, with a little more. They could have just added a little bit more oomph to it. And here, I just don't feel like there was enough. To me, and again, I know every movie's different. Every movie's tone is different. And not everybody's out to make the same thing. But to me, a good action sequence needs to happen every 25 to 30 minutes at least. It felt like it was like 40 minutes in between every time, and that just doesn't cut it for me. Not completely. I know this is the point of the story, but there's just too much investigating going on, but not enough fight action sequences, and you can have both. I've seen it. I've seen it! Which is why the tone felt a little off. Now, going into this, I kind of expected as much. It is a Netflix movie. Not that I'm trying to bash Netflix, but they've always been more missed than hit with me. But it had its moments, but the tone just could have been a little stronger. I just wanted a little more. That's it's not much to ask. And as for the villain and Anthony Michael Hall, I was pretty intrigued to see what he would bring to this role. I like that guy. He was great in Halloween Kills. Here he plays the main antagonist of this film. He plays the senator of this town, this corrupt politician, but then which one isn't? <laughs> Again, there's a positive side to this. He does play a convincing villain when he does show up. He has his moments. He does convince me when he's on screen that he plays a pretty good villain, a pretty good bad guy. Like I said, I was pretty intrigued to see what kind of villain he would play. I knew he was a villain in this. I've heard rumblings all over the internet, all over online, that he was the main antagonist of this film. So I was pretty intrigued. I was pretty won over because of that. But the negative side, he wasn't in it that much. I wanted more from him. I felt like they didn't really give him that much screen time. And that was a little bit disappointing. When he does show up, yes, he was pretty convincing. And he was pretty entertaining. But I just felt like there wasn't enough. I just wish he had a little bit more time to shine. And I felt like that they kind of dropped the ball there. Moving on to my negatives, I felt like this was a little bit of a wasted potential. I felt like this could have been a little bit more. Instead, it felt like a little bit too much of a missed opportunity. Again, I'm not bashing Netflix, but a lot of the movies that's been on there lately has been more missed than hit. But I felt like the film didn't have the impact that I had hoped. Now, I was trying to keep my mind a little open and a little open for that possibility because they say that if your expectations are low, then you'll be a little bit more relieved and you'll give the film a little bit more of a chance. And I was trying to do that, but I was hoping for a little bit more. I was really wanting more of a strong impact. Here, it doesn't really show it that much. It doesn't really give you that much of value of memorable memorabilia. Again, I felt like there was so much potential here, but I just don't feel like they stepped up enough. Instead, and I hate saying this, but instead, it just felt like something that you could easily forget. It just, it's not something that you could go out and tell your friends about and say, you just gotta watch this movie. It's the bomb. It's not, it's nothing like that. It's just another one of your basic generic Netflix type movies. Again, not a bash on Netflix. There has been some hits, but very little. But with Trigger Warning, it wasn't enough there. It just didn't really satisfy me to the level that I wanted. See, like I said, just Gabba, you were close, but not close enough. Keep it up, honey. In the end, you'll always have my heart. And you'll get it next time, baby cakes. And I'll be right there to cheer you on. Despite that, it was decent enough. Decent adjacent. But if you're a Jessica Alba fan, this may be right up your alley. Just don't expect it to be a major blockbuster hit and scream it. 
So, trigger warning for those of you who have Netflix. Have you seen it yet? What, what's your thoughts on it? Are you somebody who is an actual Jessica Alba fan? Are you someone who is looking forward to this? Were you satisfied with the film's outcome? Or were you somebody that just didn't like it at all? Were you somebody that was completely let down at this film? Leave me a comment down below. And give me your thoughts. Thank you so much, guys, for watching this. I really do appreciate it. Like, subscribe, comment, and share. Make sure to click that bell icon so you don't miss a thing. And I will see you on the next one. Peace.